Hello YouTubers. Joe Kersey here on uh, August 25th. Sorry about this nonsense of adjusting stuff. I got my tabletop tripod. On August 25th, Sunday, uh, around 3.30 in the afternoon. Now, <clears throat> of course, I went to church today, and it turned out I uh, I also read. Um, usually, you know, normally I would have been scheduled to do the first reading. We have two readers normally, and one does the Old Testament. You know, number one does the Old Testament, the prayers of the people. And number two leads the Psalm, and then. Uh, does the epistle and of course either the rector or the deacon reads the gospel and uh, uh, but uh, my the second reader didn't show up today and uh, I think they're in the process actually she and her husband are in the process of moving to Wisconsin um, but in any case she didn't show up and so uh, our deacon uh, said, well, you know, we need to, you know, we should rearrange things. I said, that's fine. Obviously, it's fine. You know, I'm, I'm but a tool. Just tell me what you want me to do. And uh, so she did, num she did the first reading and led the psalm, and I did the second reading and then did the prayers of the people. Uh, now, it turned out I, I preferred that because... Um, the first reading that was from Jeremiah 1, and that's basically talking about the call of Jeremiah. And uh, while it's a great reading, you know, uh, it's, it's fairly straightforward. And, but the Hebrews reading was from t Hebrews 12, and it's the one that ends, uh, it's the end of the chapter where it says, Our God is a consuming fire, which I think is one of the best lines in the entire New Testament. So I was delighted to get an opportunity to read that. I don't think I've, I don't think I've ever, it's ever fallen to me to read that. I've been reading since 2005, but uh, that may have been one I didn't get a chance to read. Anyway, I got to do it today, and I've enjoyed it immensely. Reading it and doing it and saying it and channeling it and the whole bit. Um, so, uh, the rector gave a heck of a sermon. Uh, see, he, he, he didn't get in the pulpit. He, he sort of walked around in the sanctuary and he didn't, he's not, he doesn't do one of these up and down the aisle things like some guys do, uh, which can be effective sometimes. Uh, but that's, that's not his, that, I don't think that will ever be his style. But when he, when he does the stuff without a script, uh, sort of in the sanctuary area he's really good he's really good and he's he stuck to this he stuck to the gospel today he didn't go off talking about some internet thing he saw or a movie he saw or you know um he did he did mention the i have a dream speech but uh but the, only briefly and uh, and he talked about the gospel there which was luke's story about account rather of uh, Jesus healing this woman in the synagogue on the Sabbath uh, who uh, had some sort of severe arthritis it sound, well, sounded like uh, and he talked about the fact that you know whether it was arthritis or not uh, there are all sorts of bonds that we have in our life that uh, if we focus on these various bonds, then we're not really focusing on 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 Christ and God and the kingdom of heaven and making the kingdom of heaven here available on earth, kingdom available here on earth. So he he did a good job and he gave a magnificent peroration, which I thought was truly off the cuff. And uh, uh, 
if he but realized that that's that's when he's at his best rather I, I think he thinks he's at his best when he tries to bring up all sorts of contemporary issues um, but each to his own I grew up with more scriptural based preaching I think than uh, perhaps he did Well, so that went well, and we had our new organist today. Our, our new organist played her first gig, so to speak, and she did a really, really good job. Um, uh, she just blew us out of the water with the postlude. I'd tell you the name of it, but I left all my service bulletins and my cheat sheets and stuff in the robing room. I, I doubt they'll throw it out, but... They might. In any case, I've got copies of my cheat sheets. I I print up some stuff that I insert in the prayers of the people, uh, uh, so I can reprint those. That's no problem. Uh, I first time I did it, I sort of did it with a certain degree of trepidation because you know, I mean, it's it's kind of almost ad libby. Uh, it, it's not in it's not in the it's not in the red book of common prayer. I mean the seventy nine American prayer book. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> well, the seventy nine American prayer book. The battery just died, of course. Thank the good Lord, I got three batteries for this thing. Um, well, anyway, so I, I myself use the 1662 book of uh, Common Prayer, uh, you know, the, from the Church of England for my own private praying and psalm reading and so forth. Um, well, in any case, I, I, I sort of did these ad lib prayers, you know, in the prayers of the people, and, uh, you know, they have six forms, and, you know, you can. Anyway, uh, apparently the director got a lot of good feedback on that, and so I have been uh, doing that every time I do it. Now, it turned out this month that I did it three times in a row, which might be a bit of a stiff dose for some folks, but uh, I guess we'll find out. But we just had a crotch rocket go by, so I apologize for that. Now, as I had indicated, this is going to be Funeral City here this coming week. We have a funeral for this one fellow on uh, Thursday at, at noon. And we have a funeral for the other fellow who actually died first uh, on Friday at 10.30 in the morning. Well, I'm glad these things are relatively in the morning. This, Sometimes these, sometimes people, for whatever whatever bizarre reason, want this stuff late in the afternoon or early evening. That's really bizarre. A wedding, perhaps, I can understand in the afternoon or early evening. But a funeral? I mean, you know, of course, sometimes you know it has to do with when the family can fly in from wherever the heck they are. And uh, well, so uh, I will be reading. I uh, don't know what I'm going to be reading. Um, Charles promised that he would tell me. Um, if I haven't heard by late Tuesday, I'm going to, you know. And then, of course, there's going to be a lot of setup involved. Now, quite honestly, uh, I have helped with this in the past, but uh, a lot of this involves Forcing these big tables around and setting them up, and uh, well, the times I've done it, I've I've either had these anginal sort of coronary episodes, you know, or near uh, near coronary episodes, um, or some of these things, uh, these table legs, you know, they swing down and they latch, and you know, and, uh, if if you get if you don't have good footing and you're sort of wobbly like I am, I mean, you can get your, you know, if you put your hands in there to steady yourself at the wrong time, 
and you're going to chop off a finger. So I might take a pass on that. And the other reason is uh, I, I help, help these folks set up for one of these you know, dining room events where they sort of have a community feed bag for people that you know, aren't making it at the end of the month. And uh, so, okay, we set the table. Well, I mean, you set the table. I mean, you put a, a plate, knife, fork, and spoon, and a napkin. Now, you know, I, I don't necessarily think you have to have the spoons match or any of this stuff match. Just give them something to eat off of and with and, and uh, you know, something to wipe their mouth with. And, um, but oh my word, it's like, oh. It was worse than when my mother would have me set the table for a family dinner. And I got sort of chided and chastised a few times by a couple of these people. Well, they were women, but they were people. They are people. You know, and I like these people anyway. I mean, but I mean, come on, you know, I mean, we're giving these people a free meal. Um, so I... I've kind of tended to avoid that since then. Well, as I as I'd indicated, our uh, our organist uh, blew us out of the water, and we, we sang some reasonably good hymns. And one of them was my very favorite. Uh, well, one of my favorites. Uh, I can't say I have a very favorite hymn. I have a lot of really good, a lot of favorite hymns. Rock of Ages. Now, uh, that led me to think I might just sing that for you guys here this Sunday. Now, uh, this, this comes from my, uh, my grandfather, my dad's dad's hymnal. It's called, uh, it's called Hymns of Praise. And uh, it's, it's from the church that he went to down in, uh, excuse me, uh, excuse me, um, Argonia, Ohio. And uh, it was published in 1922. So, uh, you know, uh, but it says here, uh, property of W.C. Kersey, Argonia, Ohio, and it's in that wonderful copper plate type script that was what a lot of people wrote in back then. And uh, my my dad wrote in copper plate. Um, he despaired greatly about my handwriting. Uh, but in any case, William Carter Kersey, that's, you know, my great great grandfather was called Thomas Carter Kersey. My son is called Thomas Carter Kersey. And my grandson is called Scott Carter Kersey. So, uh, Rock of Ages. <clears throat> Rock of Ages, Clef for me let me hide myself in thee let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flow be of sin a double cure save from wrath and make me pure Could my tears forever flow? Could my zeal no longer know? These for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. In my hand no price I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. 
while I draw this fleeting breath, when my eyes shall close in death, when I rise to worlds unknown, and behold me on my throne, rock of ages cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee. Bye-bye, YouTubers. Have a good evening.